Uh, excuse me, I have a um, <clears throat> I have a letter from um, DJ Sue that he wanted me to say before you go into this episode. Dear fans of BAM, fans of Walking Dead, and somebody that just randomly clicked on this episode. <clears throat> My name is DJ Sue. I am a member, a member, that's what it says, a member of Three Black Geeks. I requested that we did The Walking Dead. I wanted this episode to be out before San Diego Comic Con. I make a few predictions and I did not see the trailer that was dropped at San Diego Comic Con. And now I feel a little bit silly, but at the same time, this should have been up before that even happened. Now I look foolish. Hopefully, this will be a good excuse of why I sound the way I sound. And also, I'm still a genius at Walking Dead. Follow your boy. Trust what I say. I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, enjoy the show. I know why I'm here. I know what I did to Denise. To you. To other people. It doesn't matter why. I knew I'd have to face it. To pay. And I should. I'm ready. I got to see me you take it down, and that's enough. Me. I'm a piece of shit. There's no going back to how things were. I'm sorry. Like, I'm so sorry. Please. Please. Shut up. <laughs> You go, and you keep going. Don't you ever come back here again. If I ever see your face around here again, I'll kill you. You go out there and you make it right. Find her. choice i just didn't want to kill a kid's dad in front of him turns out that would have been the best thing i could have done had i done it the kid might still be alive you're beat your people are down Uh, i'll get out of it i always do it's just you and me rick you, you are torn up, man. I am bigger. I am better. And I got a bad. We can have a future. I know I will. Just give me, give me ten seconds so I can, I can tell you how. No. Just give me ten seconds for Carl. Carl said it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a fight anymore. He was wrong. H no. No. He was right.
Why do they have nicknames? You should know what the group is called. Band. Man. Big ass motherfuckers. Uh. Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, another episode of BAM. It has been a minute and... A minute? It's, <laughs> yeah, I, I know I'm putting that very lightly, you know, hey, real life has happened, yes. you know, yes. things like things have been taking place, you know, we got stuff going on, life and... Happens. Life found a yeah. way. <laughs> life, no, 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 I'm not gonna... God, I've been watching it though. I've been watching so many clips of freaking Ian Malcolm. Don't even get me started on Life Finds Away. No, I just want to use my favorite line. Life comes at you fast. <laughs> no, basically, I mean, you know, last time we did this, we were talking about the, the early parts of Walking Dead Season 8 and a little of 7. And... So, yeah, we covered all of Season 7. Our last episode of Walking Dead was all of Season 7 and Episode 1 through... Eight. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, what well, episode one through eight of season eight. Yeah. So, so we're so we're gonna go ahead and cover the last part, like the remaining episodes of season eight, right on time before the season nine premiere at Comic Con. Which, if you guys are like for like for all of you that listen to us, if you are going to be in the San Diego area for Comic Con, uh, be sure to come hang out with us. Uh, or like, spot us. If you can, or something. If you can spot us. <laughs> Let me tell you something about, okay, the latter half of season eight, right? So this is where things get interesting because I think we've said before, I think we said this before in the fact that Kirkman has made it known that he ain't following the comics. So like already when we last talked about this, Carl got bitten. Now, if you remember Carl in the comics, he kind of took the, he took the baton from Rick, basically. Yes. Yes. In the comics, he is still alive and well, and he's definitely become he definitely becomes like the uh, the main focus after the all out war. But we'll but we'll get to that. We'll get to that part in a like in a bit where we are right now in episode nine. This Jesus, you were, uh, this is where I Carl, say Carl writing letters, basically, <laughs> not, even, not even just Carl writing letters. I, I, I'm referring now to AMC because everybody says, how can Robert Kirkman allow this to happen? Uh, let's get something out of the air, everybody. Robert Kirkman has absolute zero. He has absolute zero to do with The Walking Dead TV show. He may direct it. He may write for it. He's collecting but checks. But ultimately, <laughs> you know, he's collecting checks. Ultimately, AMC owns Walking Dead as a television series. Yeah. So whatever they decide to do is is entirely up to them. And the showrunner Scott, uh, like who at that time was Scott Gimple, who who this remaining season he has caught hell. I mean, it's like I'm not asking for a show to be one for one. I think they got rid of being one for one since all the way back during the governor era essentially even they, before they just the said, governor well i mean more of season two i mean yeah season but two. the thing of it is you were still kind of like all right you're you're loosely with it and stuff and then the governor happened and it's like okay wow okay um you're going a little different now but yeah, they like, definitely took liberties with that yeah so it's like now they just freestyling and then you kill off carl which a lot of people are like so does the actor that's playing carl got beef with somebody backstage because this doesn't make any sense <laughs> no see and, and that's something else. <clears throat> that's something else. It's like so, there were so many like behind the scenes like politics running like going on with AMC, and there's a lot of people that got problems with AMC. Like both actors, writers, producers, everybody's got problems with them. I mean, home and the whole play Maggie is like, "Yo, run me my fucking money." <laughs> yeah, Lauren Cohen has been you know has been going has been bumping heads with AMC about her money, especially since her character has been pushed more into like main character territory. Yeah. And she's still been getting paid that, that supporting character, uh, salary, I suppose. So, you know, she's been, you know, she's been going through her battles with, uh, with them. And I would say, uh, as far as Carl is concerned, the Chandler Riggs, you got, you guys got to understand that he's been on the show for almost 10 Season years. Season one. <laughs> Since season one, you know, since the time, him you know, up. Since, that's the crazy, part. you know, yeah, we watched him quite literally grow up and, 
And he has kind of made it was pretty much his in a way it was his decision to leave because he you know come on kids going to college now and oh, shit. Huh. yeah you know he's going to college and even though he was working on if I'm not mistaken like he was doing the show like during his off time but he was already like well into going to college and the word came from the top and the first person to hear about it was Andrew Lincoln that Carl was going to go. Pretty sure and, he was blown. <laughs> dude, I remember reading the article where Andrew said it himself. He said, when the like when I got the call and he said, you know what? You're really not gonna like this. And he said he said, Oh my god, what is it me? He said, No, it's the kid. Andrew was silent for like a solid ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like dude on the phone was like thought he hung up on him or something. He was like, he's like, Andy, you there? He's still there. He he couldn't even talk. He really could. He's like, come on, man. Like, are you serious? Of all people, Carl, 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 Carl. like <laughs> Carl. You know the one character who let's just be real here, who's been death proof since season one. <laughs> he gets shot in the fucking eye, still alive and ticking. You know, at which we already know that that was going to happen because I was waiting for that like way back in season five. Like, bro, he's going to get shot in the eye. Finally came in. It finally came in season six and probably hands down one of the greatest episodes ever. No way out. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was season six, episode nine. For the love of God, watch that episode. That episode is amazing. Yep. But um, but anyways, so now that Chandler is out, you know, he's out of the picture. He's uh, he's pretty much done. His character, we see Carl has been spending his time writing a whole bunch of letters. <laughs> he wrote a letter to, uh, who was it? He, like, he wrote a letter to Enid. He wrote a letter to his, his dad. He wrote a letter to Michonne. He wrote a letter to, um, I believe he wrote a letter to Maggie. But the one that really stuck out was he wrote a letter to Negan. Yeah, so here's the thing about it. Like, you know, Carl's sort of messed up relationship with Negan. It it it's see I don't want to say tricky. Let me let me just say it like that. It ain't tricky, but it is complicated ish. I wouldn't I couldn't really call it complicated you know I mentioned this back in the you know in other episodes that we've done about about T D W. Um <laughs> I'm sorry like T W D like where we where I, like I've explored that uh, like that whole avenue of Carl's relationship with Negan. Jumping ahead real quick, after the All Out War in the comics, Negan gets taken prisoner, and Carl has secret visits with Negan, where he talks to him from time to time. I mean, I mean, let's be real here, man. We could jump around with this, but yeah, it, it's the source. Of, here's the thing, like, and I'm and I, if I remember correctly, even in the comics with Negan being alive, a lot of folks didn't like that shit. Like, in, in that camp, didn't like the fact that, like, they were keeping Negan alive. And that's kind of the thing that you see in this show is that... Because at first, I was thinking, all right, they're going to kill Negan. Sorry to let you go, Jeffrey D. Morgan. And then it's like, oh, he, he, he's still alive. Dude, that whole time I said, Negan's not going anywhere. First of all, Negan is too good of a character to be killed off. Off of, you know, off of... What he came in at the end of season six, stuck mm. around for all of season seven. You really think they're gonna kill him at the end of season eight? No, it ain't going down. As yeah. much as AMC loves to take their liberties, no, they're not getting rid of him. They, 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 they weren't gonna governor his ass, so yeah, they weren't. They they really weren't gonna. They really weren't gonna give him the governor treatment because hell, governor got taken out in the comics. As Robert Kirkman says, when he's done writing for a character, he kills them. Which is why I'm laughing at folks that really think John Berthal is going to have this great role, and I'm like, it's a fucking flashback. I don't know it's why it's going to be a flashback. I don't know why they're overhyping it, and I'm like, it's a goddamn flashback. People like, he ain't coming back. I'm sorry, you know, he ain't coming back. Sorry, it's just that's like, this isn't going to be like you know, this isn't going to be like homeboy, you know, homeboy who came back. Uh, who came back, what was it? He came back in the middle of season seven, I believe it was. Yeah. He was gone all the way from season one. Finally comes back. He's a savior. It gets off in, in not even an episode. <laughs> grand opening, grand closing. <laughs> My man came back just to die. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, live and learn, man. Live and learn. That's you know the thing is, I called it. I said, he's dead. He's totally dead. I'm like, dude, you are so dead. Yes, it is great to have you back. Happy to see you again. We, you know, you already gave us the info dump, the exposition. Great. We know that your family didn't survive and you're the only one left alive. Oh, you got picked up by the saviors. Great. You have definitely outlived your usefulness. You can be off now. Thank you, Daryl, for the like for the freaking crossbow. He's done. <laughs> We're good. All right, dope. <laughs> like, we good. Move it along. So, <laughs> so. So here we are with the all out war. Like we're we're like neck deep now into the all out war. Um like after the bombing of Alexandria, Alexandria is like pretty much wiped. Dude, let's just be real about this. Say to say it's wiped is an understatement. They that Alexandria has been through so much shit, it is ridiculous. It is a like come on man, like they have been through gunfights zombie invasions and shit it, yeah it, it looks like utter it looks like fucking it it's been through hell and back and then hell and, and it's just going to continue like they're just you know they're just going to rebuild you know clear everything out and rebuild again but right now as it stands Alexandria is completely destroyed and that's, and, and that's not that's not even considering what happened to the kingdom before you know they finally take it back but still you know and see, no, what happened to the kingdom is light work compared to Alexandria. Oh, Alexandria. No, I ain't saying it's the same. I'm just saying the kingdom is just like, man, we really dodged a bullet with this one. We ain't like them. <laughs> yeah. The mo- the worst that happened to the kingdom was all their fighters were killed. Yeah, which is a shame. But, you know, what can you do? Which is different because uh, in the comics, there were still a number of fighters left. You know, like a good handful of them were left. But in the TV show, holy crap, they were all gone. Uh, still, again, R.I.P. that tiger. Yeah, R.I.P. that uh, that budget. <laughs> it's like finally we loosen up the budget now. Thank God. <laughs> like we loosened up the budget on the CGI tiger. Freaking Shiva! I knew that that moment was coming, and I was I, I was I was sad, man. I was heartbroken. Walking Dead like, was on, on HBO. They wouldn't have killed the tiger. <laughs> No, guaranteed they would have killed the tiger, but it'd have been a lot. It'd have been quite graphic. They would have shown how graphic they would have. If anything, it probably would have been a lot more graphic, which is what did upset me about this all-out war uh, and, and the way that they treated the uh, like the handling of the violence. See, ever since Glenn and Abraham's death at the beginning of season seven, there's been like an outcry of people that were that were disturbed by the level of violence and gore. It's fucking AMC, and really? That's what I said. That's what I said. I said the same thing as AMC. But hey, guess what? HBO said the same thing when Walking Dead was being pitched to them, and they wanted them to tone down the violence. But AMC gave them, like, pretty much gave them the, hey, go ahead and, hey, do you, fam. But I'm wilding out they... that HBO sat there and said tone down the violence, and they got goddamn Game of Thrones. Right? But... I want, but I guess considering the amount of gore that has gone on in Walking Dead, especially during season one and two, there were things that I'm, that I'm sure they did have to tone down. But they've toned down things a lot uh, in the latter half of season eight. Yeah. So, so like for example, with the like like with the all out war. Uh, so far, how how have you liked the all out war? You know what? I am digging the brutality of it. Um, you know, like I said, between okay, so between Morgan and Carol basically being the Ebony and Ivory connection, you know, doing their thing. Um, you know, you got Michonne and Maggie, and them basically kind of doing their thing to kind of basically get the community and stuff it's it's about what i expected it to be um i i think i was it, it put this way coming off of the quote-unquote war with the governor this is like way better oh absolutely even though in the comics the war with the governor was a lot more brutal than what we got in the tv show um, this is this because this this basically to me makes up for it honestly this does make up for it especially the handling of the character because let's just be real 
I said this many times. The governor in the TV show is like a night and day difference, uh, you know, compared to the comic book version. Like Negan in this TV show works out what Negan in the TV show is basically what we thought the governor was going to be. Yeah, I would say more or less uh, Negan in the TV show is how the governor should have been uh, from the TV show. You know, no, dis- like no disrespect to like David Morrissey. No, no disrespect to him. Like he portrayed him very well. You know, he was pretty much given. Pretty much told how he had to portray the governor, um, and you know he just did. You know he just worked with what he had. But if he had to, you know, if he, had, I just wish that he could have portrayed him the same way that they portrayed him in the comics. Yeah. But what we got so far with the, you know, with the All Out War, um, we got Oceanside, we got Simon and and like Simon and the rest of the. The saviors, I guess him trying to convince the saviors that, hey, I really don't like the way Negan has been, let's just be real here, wasting our time and resources with this war with Alexandria, the kingdom, and everybody else. Just really sick of it. Yeah. I mean. And he's been plotting behind closed doors to try to take over. I mean, who hasn't been plotting? (laughs) Well, he's the only one that was bold enough to do it. Nah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's and and okay, so I guess I, I kind of want to talk about this first because this has kind of been on my mind a little bit and stuff. Um, I thought it was interesting how how they've been handling Morgan. Yeah. Again, another character that's complete, that's a super night and day difference from his comic book counterpart. And how he's been transitioning into Fear of the Walking Dead now. Which works, because at this point in the story, uh, Morgan was long since dead in the comics. Hell, yeah, but I mean, I know the TV show is functioning way like, just like, you know what, we're going to do something different. And then, boom, we got a crossover and stuff. So, I, I was completely fine with it and stuff. Because, I mean... I felt I feel Morgan would do more good on Fear the Walking Dead. He would. In fact, you know it's funny that that, that he's uh, that he transitioned over to Fear the Walking Dead because there's talks that uh, what's his name My, uh, Michael Kudlis is supposed to be transitioning over to that show as well. Yeah, that we're supposed to get Abraham in Fear of the Walking Dead. Well, Fear the Walking Dead is like before all this, right? You know, I don't know where it is anymore because if. <laughs> He, if Morgan went away, at like by the end of the All Out War, he goes away, and he goes to Fear of the Walking Dead. Ah, okay, yeah. I mean, that's why I was, it was supposed to be the crossover episode. That's why I'm like, Fear of the Walking Dead seems like they're taking place concurrently. So I mean, if it's supposed Dead, to take on a different part of the U.S. <laughs> exactly. Like right now, they're in Texas. Yeah. So I'm wondering, you know, were we supposed to see? exactly uh like did we see exactly where morgan went when is this supposed to be morgan on his journey going to texas and then finding his way back to alexandria to be you know be with rick and crew or is this really after the all-out war and i am under the assumption that this is after the all-out war i mean it's no different than fucking dr dre disappearing in walking dead so Oh, you know what? I got some lore for you on that. You want to dish the lore now? Fuck it. Okay, the reason why we have not seen the return of Heath is because technically, uh, shit, I'm like I fought, like I'm drawing a blank here on the on the actor who plays him. Uh, what's his name? I'm calling him Doctor Dre. I'm just gonna. Call him. <laughs> you call Doctor Dre? I forgot I'm his sorry. name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I if I can't. I'm sorry. I, I just can't think of his name right now. But the actor who plays him, yeah, he is signed under CCA. Now CCA is a group of is like a, is an agency that hires a lot of you know up there actors, and he's in there now. You know who else is in there? Who? Uh, <laughs> Andrew Lincoln. Ooh. Now. There's a problem. There's been a, another internal struggle between CCA and AMC. A lot of actors have been, a lot of actors who work with AMC, especially on Walking Dead, have had their complaints with them, and they're in the middle of a lawsuit with AMC. Wow. 
So legally, he can't come back. Till that whole thing gets settled. Yeah, either either till that whole thing is settled or I'll be quite honest with you, I don't think he's ever coming back. I mean, cause I, I figured he was leaving because of the whole 24 show that he was doing. Didn't yeah, and that's another thing. He's on like, 24, but they kind of just wrote him out of the show. <laughs> they basically kept him alive. Essentially, you might as well say technically he's alive. He's just, just yeah, he's alive. Anymore. He's just written. He's just written out of the show, and um, and it's it's funny because in the comics he's still alive, but you know he's uh, he's disabled because he lost. He he ended up losing his leg in the All Out War. See, I thought he was actually, you know, the funny thing is, I actually thought he was going to transition into Fear of the Walking Dead. Yeah, that would have been kind of cool, but again, AMC, CCA, ain't going down, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I've been, like I said, I've been digging Morgan and him transitioning to Fear now, and I think he will be better served, but I ain't going to lie, man. I was kind of missing him and Carol and them kind of doing their thing and stuff, so, and... I guess we like I said we're gonna get more uh, book of Eli Morgan in that movie in that show so I'm I'm all I'm all with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean I do like the direction they took with Morgan. I mean right now he's just a man that's constantly at you know like dealing with the struggle with himself. Yeah, do I kill or do I you know that kind of stuff? So that yeah, makes sense. It's like you know with like with the saviors, it's like I want them gone. You know, period. But at the same time. All life is precious. My man is having a battle with himself. <laughs> cool. See, I knew you were going to put that in there. All life is precious. Well, of course, Morgan. All life is precious. But sometimes you got to kill a dude. Just saying. Exactly. I mean, come on. He ki- like, look, he's almost killed. You know, the little kid that, you, that you've that you been looking after. You know, he killed his brother, Henry. And, yeah. you know, I'm sorry. He killed Henry's brother. And Henry almost got killed. Hell, he almost killed Henry. Yeah. That's why I'm like, dude, you like, you're really gonna, we, we're really doing this whole thing of value life. Okay, I get it, but can't be peaceful in the, uh, in the, in the Walking Dead world here, sir. And, and you know something like a lot of, uh, I would say a lot of things that that took place in the show that I found quite interesting. Uh, we got to see the death of Tobin. Yeah, that was um, amazing. <laughs> like we saw how, and again we're jumping like we're, we're jumping around with, like with this like with this topics, but it, it's cool. So, in one 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 thing that they took straight out of the comics was Negan's idea to do some biological warfare, and this just goes into the genius that is of uh, Negan being a, uh, like a crazy ass tactician. He mm-hmm. said, "What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a scare tactic." Everybody take your weapons, take all your melee weapons, and just gunk them up with walker guts. Oh, shit, yeah, yeah. All you got, and all it takes is to just be touched by this. If we inflict a wound with walker guts, no matter, you know, yeah, no matter how minor or severe it is, you're going to die, period. That that see that's scary than getting bit by a walker. Yeah, it is. That is like, and that's genius because you would think up to this point somebody would have thought about that, and it's like, yo, that is. Yeah, fun. you would think you would think that somebody who came up with the idea of covering yourself in walker guts for camouflage, why not cover your weapons in walker guts? So even if you even if you can't technically kill somebody you got you you managed to attack you managed to inflict a wound no matter how minor it is they're gonna die yeah that that's scary that is some scary shit and i thought that was one of the coolest things that they that they put into from uh, that they took from the comics and i was so happy that they went with that and now that they you know, and now that they did that again this was supposed to be used as a scare tactic but since negan got separated from the saviors because of Rick. Rick, I love how Rick was on. He was on the walkie-talkie, like, "Yeah, I see him. No, I'm not gonna do nothing. I'm not gonna go after him. I'm just letting you know that I see him." My man clicked off, said, "Screw this!" Hopped in the car and chased down Negan, <laughs> as he should. He chased him down into the building, which was filled with walkers, 
And boy, we got that shot that you want to talk about. You want to talk about a trailer shot or a TV like a tr- like a preview shot that threw you for a loop, kind of like how uh, Avengers: Infinity War did with their trailer. Yep, that part where he walked in and said, "It's already too late. This is where you die." A lot of people assume that this is where. It, Rick was going to kill Negan or this was going to or he was going to imprison him there because it did. You know, it was like a very dark spot. And Negan was like, hey, my people are coming. No, they're not. Nobody's coming, dude. He actually threw you off course and nobody was able to track you down, especially now that you got Simon, who's like, yeah, that did happen. He did get separated from us. Huh? Let's slowly take our time to go look for him. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Simon! Like, did you put Boy. two and two together, guys? Uh, I hope you did. <laughs> I-, I swear, Simon was such a bastard during the during the latter half of the season. <laughs> oh, that, that, see, now you saw he was a bastard. I knew he was. An no, no, no. I knew he then. was, but I mean, I knew he was, but dude. He wore that shit as a badge of honor during that last half of the season. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I am no longer looking at Simon. I am looking at Trevor from GTA. <laughs> Trevor was an asshole, but he was a crazy asshole. You were fine with this. This one is just like, you're an asshole, dog. <laughs> yeah, like this is asshole, like true asshole Simon. Like, bro, you are going against your boy here. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on, yes. Look, we're look. We I know that. Look, you guys are friends. You guys, you know, you guys work together and everything. You know that Negan, you know, is a decent leader at what he does. I know you have your disagreements with him, but come on, he's the boss. Yeah, are you really gonna try to go against somebody who, let's just be real, is smarter than you? Mm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he really tried. He, like, and, and you knew, you knew that. Shit was gonna come back to bite him in the ass when he went to the uh, when he went to go see the scavengers. Yeah, and you heard Negan. Only one. <laughs> when I when I heard that, I, I said, "You know," I said, "Dude, you know full and well that it's not gonna be only one." Come on, I mean, if if you really think that it was gonna be one, well, I got I got I got a million dollars, imaginary dollars that I can give you right now. But I'm going to jump back to that in a second. Going back to the fight, again, was it round two? I'm going to say round two or three of Nick versus, I mean, of Rick versus Negan inside that, like, inside that building with the walkers. Uh-huh. Rick gets a hold of Lucille. And woo, did we see some shit go down. My dude, man set Lucille on fire. Dude, that's the equivalent of touching your, your parents' belt when they're beating you. That is. <laughs> so it's like, oh boy, shit's on. Rick got. But you Lucille. know it was bad. But you know it was bad that he first of all when Nia got separated from Lucille, and Rick stumbled across it. He said, "Man, he said, man, it's a real shame. It really sucks to be you, Negan. Like you, like look, you got nobody. Your saviors ain't coming to help you. You can't even protect them. Hell, you got your people killed. You can't protect nobody." Not I mean, even this the, the, baseball the, the, bat that you hold dear to your heart. My man said, Rick, I'm willing to let everything go. Don't do anything to Lucille. Dog. He said, hey. <laughs> he said, hey, you know what? Mm, I'm going to let you go ahead and say goodbye. My man lit the bat on fire. Bruh, can I talk about the fact that throughout the whole scene, right, all these zombies are coming up there. Rick is missing Negan, setting zombies on fire. Negan is literally pulling some fucking American Ninja Warrior shit where he is avoiding getting bitten while ducking and dodging the fucking bat. Right? I was like, Doc, how are you doing this and not getting bitten? Hey, man, that leather jacket. <laughs> gotta be. Gotta be. It's got to be the jacket. But Negan got his bat back and just started going to town on them zombies. And just the fight period was just ridiculous. It's like, yo, how did Rick not get bitten? He's literally fucking two-piecing zombies and then got his axe back. 
Which was cool. Again, this was, you want to talk about some close quarters combat, man. Like, these two, they go from fighting each other to fighting zombies and separating themselves and just getting away. Like, not only does Negan manage to get... It was self-preservation at that point. It was. But not only did Negan manage to get away, Negan managed to get away and got taken. And who does he get taken by? Jadis. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which circles back to why Jadis went and picked him up. So so when Simon went to the oh, he went to the junkyard to question uh, the scavengers about why they betrayed them. And they said, hey, they offered us a deal. It looked like a pretty good deal. We went to go check it out. And yeah, you say that. But I'm really having a hard time believing you. And again, Jade is speaking in scavenger talk. <laughs> you know? Like you know how it is, where she's like responding in like less than three word responses. Yeah. And Simon delivering the meme. He delivers the meme of bullshit. <laughs> yo, but hey, did you peep the fact that yo Anne literally fucking uh, pistol with the shy Negan? Yeah, she did. She pistol whipped him. He was like, now, well, shit. Bloop. <laughs> now, when when I, I like when I saw that, I said, you know what? Not a gun butt, but a very nice pistol whip to fade out. <laughs> so you, you look, you get credit. <laughs> so you get credit. Here's an A+. Plus. <laughs> a for effort. A for effort and a scratch and sniff sticker. So, heck, Pos- like, enjoy that, Jadis. Possible S tier, maybe. But... And she was in her right to, you know, to feel the way she felt because after she said, look, well, look, I'll apologize. Look, we're sorry. We're sorry. It's not going to happen. I'm not believing it. So he decides to light him up. And when he says, first, first, he shoots one person. Yeah. Then he shoots another person. Mm -hmm. And after he gets slugged one time by Jadis. Says, he says, hey, oh, that's it. Now you pushed me. Everybody, all the scavengers get murdered except for Jadis. Yeah. And what really sucks is they all event- They don't just get killed. They get killed enough to be turned into walkers. And when Rick and Michonne decide to warn uh, Jadis and the scavengers that the saviors are coming, they were too late. They showed up and they noticed that the place was empty, and Jadis was all alone. And ooh, we 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 see some brutal shit here. We see all of the zombie scavengers get tossed into the grinder. <laughs> that was awesome. I gotta admit, straight up, that was, it, great, it was. greatness as at its finest. I was like, oh, that was that was a long time coming. I mean, bro, but did you see the numb look on Jadis' face when she, as soon as she pushed that button and lifted up that chain, she's like, yep, I'm doing this. She looked very, uh, how how we say it, uh, unbothered. Yeah. <laughs> but you could tell, but you could tell on the inside, her soul was shattered. Well, yeah, I mean... At this point, that's that's what was kind of interesting in how, you know, she ends up later down the road, spares Negan, basically turns him down, and she tries, you know, tries to sit there and um, she ends up accepting Morgan's offer. Yeah, but can we? Yeah, but let but let's talk about how she actually held Negan prisoner for for an entire episode. Had plenty of opportunities to kill him. I love the fake out that they that uh, that she did, where she was holding Lucille and attempted to like to hit him with it. Of course, that doesn't happen. But what she does instead is she decides to stick Lucille inside of this bucket of wood and salt and. She was about to attempt. I mean, she was attempting to burn Lucille. <laughs> it's like if Rick couldn't do it, I'll do it. Exactly. Like I'm going to finish the job here. But, but we noticed a couple of things. 
uh, something that like something that did take place. Negan manages to find a way, not necessarily to free himself, but he manages to get a hold of a gun and the flare to set fire to her photos. Mm-hmm. She had like she had a bunch of photos of like of everybody of like all the scavengers, and she's like, "Hey," I mean, and he tells her like, "Look, I had nothing to do with what happened here." <laughs> I have been trying to tell you that for God knows how long, but you won't listen to me. So if you don't let me go, you can kill me, but I am setting fire to something that you hold dear as you already have something that I hold dear to me. So we can either sit back, talk this shit out, possibly bump uglies, and... (laughs) Like and we could try to like try to move on from this. I will rectify the situation if you could just let me go. But um but no, again, she's not having it. She then decides to pull a like pull a freaking walker, which I like to call Wilson 2.0. <laughs> Wilson. You know. No, cuz I mean I'm sorry, not Wilson, freaking Winslow. She pulls in Winslow 2.0 here and had a, like had this walker ca- like freaking caged up. Had it close enough to Negan to, uh, you know, to make it seem like she was gonna, like to make it seem like she was gonna kill him. But I really think that she was just using it to scare him. And then we get a random thing that uh, that happens: a freaking chopper shows up. Which, in a Walking Dead world, any sort of vehicle automatically puts you in the top tier category because you have an actual functional vehicle. <laughs> yeah. And and in their case, it's something else. See, it's more than just you know, it's more than just a random chopper that shows up. Uh, Janus has connections with uh, with this chopper. See, they actually like not far. Like I would say, right outside the junkyard is a helipad, which Simon mentioned to them about that. Hmm. He mentioned what's with the helipad, and of course, she tried to play dumb and act like he, you know she didn't know what he was talking about. But a chopper does show up. And was flying around the area. She tried to get a flare to signal them, but they were gone. Hmm. Yeah. She was trying to get picked up by them, which leads into some, you know, which leads into some other stuff, which also is connected uh, very well to the comics. Um, so she, dis- so finally, she spares Negan. She lets him go. Negan leaves. And he gets like he he's was he takes off in a car, and he picks up somebody randomly on the street. We find out who that is a little later. He gets back to the sanctuary, and everyone's like, "Holy shit!" Like Negan, you're back. <laughs> what what happened? Yeah, I'm back. But let's just leave that as a surprise, cause I got a buttload of surprises for everybody. See, Sue is saying that. But you have to picture the way Jeffrey Dean Morgan says it, and that's and that that shitty grin that he has as he's saying it. Oh, believe me, I had that same grin as I was saying it. <laughs> Swear to God, so, Jeffrey Dean Morgan knows how to get that shitty grin on his face when he's all like, "That's a surprise." It's like, whoop, there you go. I got some surprises. shit's about to go down. It's like Daddy's home. And Daddy's got a lot of surprises for everybody. You know, I was actually waiting. For like a scene where somebody was like, "Huh, I thought you were dead," and then he was gonna kill him because he was trying to take over and shit. I was like, "Oh, well, that didn't happen." It's kind of nah, see, Negan is really good at playing possum. He played possum and just postured the shit out of everything right now. <laughs> he he sat there and waited first because like, he knew in his mind he said, "You know what? I'm gonna take care of everything one by one." He sat down and tried to sweat Simon. In which I love how he had both Simon and Dwight in the room. And he's looking at him like, I have two of the biggest traitors in my camp right now. And I could just take Lucille and just, you know, take the business into Lucille and just deliver it to both of them right here and now. But <laughs> too easy. Nah, too easy. It's too easy. I'm going to let him sweat for a little bit. Just a little bit. So he decides to come up with a crazy ass plan that forces that that makes Simon believe you know what I am so sick of this shit Dwight here's what we're gonna do we're gonna do this we're gonna take him out we're gonna lead him into the courtyard and we're gonna kill him 
do you really think that that's a good idea, Simon? Hey, man, you either with this or you're not. Are you with this? <laughs> All right, yeah, uh, I'm with it. Okay, I'm with it. So Simon, of course, trying to pull, I mean, Simon Dwight trying to play both sides of the coin here. He agrees to have Negan meet with Simon in the middle of the courtyard. They get out there. Simon thinking that this is just going to be a meeting and they're going to use it to ambush Negan. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Negan already went ahead and got Simon's guys on his side to say, oh, you really thought that you were just going to leave me out here and you were going to try to kill me and take over? So you're just going to force the sanctuary by your hand, huh? Like, no, no, nah, that ain't going down, Simon. If you really want to take over, be a man about it. <laughs> so they well, I mean, that's, that's Negan's thing anyway, is that, yo, suck it up and be a man about the shit. If you're going to do it, do it. Exactly. So they decide to have a one-on-one. They fist fight in, in, the, uh, in the Savior's meeting room. And, and, and shit. you know, they brawl it out. For everyone to watch, me, I love how you got some people that were silently in the, like, they were quietly in the back going, all right, I got 20 on Simon. I got 50 on Negan. <laughs> like, first off, where are you getting this money from, dog? Second off, is money is even a good concern, <laughs> currency in The Walking Dead? I don't think so. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, you know what, you know what, like, you know what's about as valuable. You, you want to know what, what works, what has as much value as uh, as money in The Walking Dead, good currency. I would say rations, basically. Shit. <laughs> it's like I got three rations. I said, "Yo, I got three rations and half of a Kit Kat bar." <laughs> basically, it's like who, like who you like? Goddamn, can of beans is more fucking worth it than some damn money. Shit. Bro, I got can like yo, I got can of beans, I got stewed tomatoes, <laughs> and I got like and I got a half I got a half like a half container of tuna fish. It's like not just any can of beans, Bush's beans. All right, Bush. son. <laughs> Top of the line here, son. Like, oh, like, oh, what's this? What's this? Oh shit, son. I got some Dijon mustard. <laughs> done. Done. Fucking done, man. Bro, I'm sorry. This is putting me. God, this is making me hungry. I gotta make I, now. I gotta make that Dwight sandwich. Man, it, it, this this like I said, Negan's whole game is just. I like you said. I like the idea. I like the fact that he plays possum to make people sweat. Because I mean, look, if I was working with Negan, any day he could just put a bat to my ass without even a reason. Yeah, he could have. So and it's like, people, already, that's enough to be sweating more so than being bit by a goddamn zombie. Like, people don't understand that when Negan says, I that when Nega says I am everywhere, he means that. He's got eyes and ears everywhere. Why do you think everybody at the savior, everybody at the sanctuary always says, who are you? I'm Negan. Yeah. You know, despite what you may think of him, he has people that are loyal to him. Mm-hmm. Now, now as the fight was going on, we see Negan finally get the he gains the upper hand and chokes the piss out of Simon, killing him. Now, as he's killing him, Dwight grabs Gregory and gives him plans that that which I am which I laughed my ass off because I knew for something told me why would Negan come up with a crazy ass plan like this. Uh, like to like just because he really wants to get rid of Rick and crew that bad, this plan just seems so crazy. He like Dwight copied the plans down, gave him to like gave him to uh, Gregory and told him get this to like get this to Rick, warn them, tell them you know tell them that this is what's about to go down. <laughs> what Dwight doesn't know is that those plans were fake plans to lead Rick into an ambush. Because of course he does. Because Simon, I mean, because Negan already found. I mean, because Negan found out that that Dwight was also another uh, traitor. Because the person who he picked up was the girl who found out that uh, that uh, that Dwight was the traitor that killed him. Way uh, was it back in season eight? Like, was it season eight A in the A scenario of, of season eight? Yeah. So. She comes back 
And yeah, when she comes back and said, yeah, he's the traitor. So he gets taken prisoner. He's put right back into that same position that Daryl was in when he was taken prisoner. Hmm. Yeah. You know, he's wearing the jumpsuit and everything. Now, now, so, now, as all this is happening, um, we cut back over to we cut back over to uh, the hilltop because we haven't uh, we haven't heard from them in a while. Um, what's going on with the hilltop is we got the we got the the save uh, we got the what is it the saviors that were taken prisoner at, from their outpost. They're still at the hilltop. They still kept prison. They still kept prisoners. Um, earlier, before Simon was killed, he led a team of like he led his team of saviors to the hilltop to kill them once and for all. And we got some amazing callbacks to the comics. Now, I don't know if you read. I don't know if you, you know. I don't know if you're. A, if you're from, if you're as familiar as I am with the comics of All Out War, Please wait. You're more familiar with it. Me, I read it in passing, basically. So, yeah. Okay. There's a part that I had would that I was hoping and praying that they would do, and I am so glad that they did it. So Simon thought that they had the upper hand on them by you know by shooting at them and quote unquote trying to scare them slash kill them, and they drove them back into Barrington House. Now, as they drove them back into the house, you notice that the entire hilltop is silent. It's like dead silent. Yep. That's a bad sign. That is already a bad sign. When you're on when you're when you're in enemy territory and it's dead silent, you're they got the home field advantage, you know something's about to go down. So what happens next is they're walking like they're walking through the field. And again, why would you walk in the middle of an open field in front of a freaking house in dead silence? <laughs> this is, I'm sorry, this is, this was so beautiful, what took, uh, the very next thing that happened. So what happened next is, they flashed the lights. Bright ass halogens are flashed on Simon and crew, and they unload clips into the saviors. <laughs> Save we see, L's this season, bruh. They were shooting from Barrington House, and they just they just they waste. I mean, they just laid down lead on them. That was a shot taken straight out of the comics, and of course, in the comics, Negan was there with them when it happened. He managed to get away with like probably a handful of saviors, but everybody else got killed. So, what happened next was, um, like what happened, and of course, you know what happened before that was. Maggie was telling them, look, we have your people. If you come in here firing guns, you're going to kill them. And Simon, bold ass Simon said, hey, you know what? Screw them. They were dumb enough to get themselves caught by you. They deserve to die. I'm like, okay. You just gave these saviors a reason to pretty much give you the middle finger and not come back. <laughs> like, congratulations, Simon. You played yourself. Like so literally, literally the DJ Kali thing. Pop. Literally, I'm going to be honest with you. Season eight was nothing but congratulations. You played yourself. Insert, so now, wh- insert whatever character that you could think of that was doing that. Right. So. So now that, like, so now that that, ha- I mean, now that that happened, the damage was still done, and you had people that were hurt, and Sadiq was checking everybody, and and everybody had that look like, you know what, you know, yeah, you know, you just, you know, you suffered like a minor wound, like you should be okay. They had no idea that, you know, that these wounds were caused by Walker, you know, Walker guts and Walker gut inf- uh, infected weapons. So. In the middle of the night, which was also a callback to earlier seasons where, like where uh, where the good guys camped out in one house all together, because mm-hmm. they, yeah. they'd done this before. They did they did it back in season two, and they did it back in season five, where everyone was camped out together. And also a callback to season one was was when a zombie attack 
took place when everybody was asleep. This also, I'm sorry, this also came back in season three. Because remember when that infection had spread and everybody was getting sick and they died from, like, everyone that died from that, uh, that, that, I guess, that, that, uh, that sickness, when they died, they turned into zombies, which, uh, which they had, like, the whole eye bleeding thing. Yeah. That happened again, but this, you know, of course it took place inside Barrington House, which everybody wondered, and, and even I got to question this, you got a zombie that falls down the stairs, loud as hell. How, considering you, dude, if a zombie falls down the stairs, I'm instantly thinking the zombie's body is just going to just break apart, and somehow it makes this loud ass fucking noise, like, like how heavy was his zombie again? No, not even, not even break apart. It's you're falling down a set of half of a damn spiral stair and freaking like inside of a damn colonial house. This is a long ass flight of stairs. You mean to tell me that nobody woke up from that? No, nah, they didn't. Nobody woke up from the sound of falling down the stairs. Better yet, um, hey, Hilltop Barrington House, why the hell do you have the front door open? Why? Why white is the front people. door open? Why? No, I can't even say white people because this is a this is a international group of folks. You got white people, you got black people. Okay, you got fair, enough. fair enough. Fair you enough. Know, you're right. You're right. You got some multicultural people. This is just stupidity. Usually, I don't care. That's usually gates, my go to thing, and it's like, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, like I don't care. Like I don't care if the gates closed and you know they're completely fenced off and walkers can't get in. Shit can happen. You got people that were sleeping in the infirmary that died from their, you know, died from their wounds. They became walkers and they attacked. They attacked people from inside the infirmary. Nobody heard the screams. They attacked from inside the house. Again, you got a zombie that falls down a flight of freaking stairs and no one hears it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That that is just like anyone who's ever seen uh, the YouTube series. Like, uh, was it the Street Fighter stupidity? Street Fighter Stupidity, the freaking, uh, was the Dark Stalker Stupidity. There needs to be a Walking Dead Stupidity video series. And that falls in line perfectly with Walking Dead Stupidity. Mm. Body falls down a flight of stairs, nobody wakes up. In a world where you're supposed to sleep with one eye open, especially in the middle of an all-out war, nobody woke up from that. I'm sorry to be on this subject for as long as I am, but that shit just really pissed me off. I mean... It really upset me, like... Can I be real? Still not as stupid as Homeboy in fucking season two with a fucking bony ass zombie getting bit. I'm like, how the fuck you get bit by that goddamn thing? Oh, oh, oh. Are you talking about when uh, Dale got, like... (laughs) Fucking Dale. I'm like, dog, Dale, push him off. Push him off. (laughs) Nope. Dale's like, ah, it's gonna bite me. Uh, He didn't even bite him. He just ripped his he just ripped his freaking stomach open. I'm like, dog, Dale could have survived. That zombie it wasn't like it was a regular zombie was like, okay, yeah, I can see that. It was a zombie that, that literally had skin peeling off of him. And it wasn't just any dude, it wasn't just a zombie that had skin peeling off of him. This is a zombie that Carl was messing around with. It was stuck in the mud. And he He could have just left it alone. Like it was stuck there. Why did you throw a rock at it, Carl? Why did you let it loose? Yeah. And better yet, why did you finish the job? Why did you kill it? Why did you warn somebody that there was a zombie out there? Nope, you didn't do that because you never stay your ass in the damn house. Yeah, that's why I say a lot of uh, stupidity in Walking Dead is along the lines of just... It was it just is, so much... There was just so much stupid stuff in this series. So, so yeah, so, so yeah, so we got the slaughter that took place inside of Barrington House. Uh, of course, uh, I'm not going to say no major characters were killed because you had Tobin. He was a he was a pretty big character during during this time in The Walking Dead. Yeah, he like this was his last episode, so he dies, and a number of other characters also die. Um, what happens next is you know they like everybody gets. Uh, you know, of course, everybody that turned, you know, they all die, and a lot of people were confused. They were like, "What the hell happened? Like, nobody got bit. How did this happen?" And then they figured it out that they were killed by weapons. They were killed by melee weapons. Mm-hmm. And when, when, uh, who was it? When what's her name? Yeah, Tara. Tara. 
who was about to get killed by Simon, uh, Dwight shot an arrow at her. Mm-hmm. But he shot her with a clean arrow, which again, this was a callback to the comics. This happened, but instead of it happening to Tara, it happened to Rick um, when Negan ordered Dwight to shoot air, uh, to shoot uh, Rick with a poison arrow. And instead he hits her with a clean arrow. And then everybody thought that, oh, she got hit with an arrow. She's going to die. Which I'm like, no, not going to happen. Her arrow, or the arrow that she got hit with was clean. Hell, it was barely a flesh wound. She's good. Hmm. So she's uh, so she managed to stay alive. And even then, she said, "You know what? Dwight's been on our side. Like, like Dwight has been on our side this whole time. Even when I had the chance to kill him and I didn't, you know, he got away. He's been fighting on our side. Daryl, I know you got your feelings. You know, look, you have your reasons of wanting to kill him and all that. I know you you feel some type of way about him still, but I'm out." I'm like I'm done. So when Tara, the like, like probably the one person who had the biggest reason to kill Dwight for killing her girlfriend, um, uh, 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 freaking Denise, when even when she says I'm done, I'm letting it go. He's on our side. I have no reason to go after him anymore. Even Daryl's like shit. Fuck it. I'm gonna go after him just off a of, off a of principle alone. He's still holding on to that revenge. And uh, so what? Ha- I mean, so what takes place next is they figured out that now um, their next order of business is to try to get a hold of Eugene. So yeah, Rosita, Eugene, and- Eugene. Okay, can I talk about Eugene real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Eugene's been on this little bit of an interesting trip where essentially he has some folks making bullets. Yeah, because we well, because way back in season six, yeah, remember he had that uh, he had that facility uh, which had all the materials necessary. They you know for him to make bullets for him to make a uh, handmade bullets. Yeah, and he you know he told you know just out of fear you know of Negan and the Saviors since he was taken um, you know since he was taken by force way, uh, back in season seven. To be under their wing, yeah, he, he's had a he had a bit of an interesting journey this whole season. So I'm, yeah. This I mean, this happened in the comics. This did yeah. happen in the comics where he was forced to make ammunition for them. Yeah, but uh, but what ended up happening and what ends up happening is he at the same time still tries to help out like any you know anybody from Alexandria as much as he tries to play off. I'm a savior, you know, like I, like you guys were nothing more than travel companions, nothing more, yada, 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 which we all know is bullshit. He knows that he wants to lie. He wants to keep up his lie for as long as he can without getting caught. And eventually he gets taken by prisoner by both Rosita and Daryl, and they almost kill him. They all like they they like they attempted to kill him because they figured, hey, you know what? They have our bullet maker. If yeah. we get rid of him, because we have really no reason to keep him alive, if we get rid of him, they'll be out of ammo. Whatever ammo they have left, it'll be all they have. And which I'm looking at them like, but wouldn't you guys also be out of ammo too? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, you haven't thought that far ahead there, have you, Rosita? <laughs> nah, I mean, Rosita's still being Rosita, so. So, I mean, I know you still feel the way you feel because of... You know, because of what happened with both Abraham and and Sasha, yeah. But but, uh, yeah. but instead, instead, we get probably the greatest tactic from uh, like, like from like from Eugene, where he puked on Rosita, <laughs> just as zombies were showing up. My man puked on her and ran away. And my man pulled some freaking solid snake shit by hiding in ash. Yeah. He he hid under a pile of ash and ran back to the saviors. So he goes back to them and he noticed that uh Gabriel who's also uh stayed on un- who also stayed with them. He, you know, remember he was also attempted to escape earlier as well with Dr. Carson. Uh Dr. Carson ended up getting killed and Gabriel is still like half blind. 
And yeah. since he could be used as a, you know, as a fighter, he was used as, uh, you know, as a worker inside, you know, inside the, uh, the bullet making factory. So it was, well, you know, while in the comics, it was originally Eugene's idea to make, you know, to make bullets that wouldn't work properly. It was actually Gabriel that decided to sabotage the bullets, whether it was whether it was his skill or his, uh, you know, or his lack of sight that caused him to not, you know, make the bullets correctly because Eugene noticed it and said, it, you know, if it were, up to, you know, if it were really up to me, I would assume that you were trying to sabotage these weapons, you know, Bo- like big boss, man. Negan wants these weapons, wants these bullets signed, sealed, and delivered, you know, ASAP and in working order. And by you, you know, and by you compromising these bullets puts us all at risk. We could all be killed because of you. So he tried to take them off of off a of bullet making detail and instead, uh, you know, comes up with the idea of making bullets that work properly. But after being, you know, after being, you know, uh, taken by Rosita and Daryl and pretty much being chastised by Rosita about doing something positive for once in your miserable life, uh, you know, and do and make yourself useful. He finally decides, you know what? We are going to do something useful with our lives. Like for once right there, I knew you're going to make, you're going to make bullets and you're going to sabotage them. I know that's what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. That is what you're going to do. You're going to sabotage the bullets. So that's like so that was Eugene. I mean, so that's Eugene in uh, like in a nutshell. There. Um, now we got some. Now we have some interesting visitors that that show up at the hilltop. We are introduced to a character named Georgie, and Georgie comes from. We don't know. You know, we don't know where she comes from. But we know that she comes from. Uh, we just know that she comes from a place where they exchange uh, food, knowledge, and all sorts of. No, I'm sorry. They exchange. They exchange knowledge for food and and stuff. Uh, food and music. Yeah. So apparently, the hilltop just happened to have a nice vinyl collection lying around, and they decided to give it to her. Of course, after you know displaying how you know, how ready to fight that they were. Cause they're like, Hey, we've been through so much shit yeah. where if anytime somebody shows up to us with smiles and open arms, we never look at them. Like you are who you say you are. Well, you know, what's crazy about Georgie is that like, I remember off the break and this was on Twitter. Everybody thought that Georgie was actually Pamela from the comics. In a way she is. I mean, she I is would not... but like, but like directly, directly. You know, I'm with, well, like, well, like we said earlier, AMC's taking a lot of liberties. Yeah. At first, people thought that the time jump wasn't gonna, you know, wasn't gonna take place, but it's already been confirmed that the time jump is gonna take place. It's supposed to be two years, so yeah. we're gonna like so when season nine takes place, it's gonna take place two years into like two years after the all out war. Makes sense. Now, now what? Now what I believe is uh, like. Well, you know, I'll, I'll get to that part later. Yeah. So Georgie, like, so Georgie is Pamela, which everybody's assuming, including myself. I'm assuming that she is Pamela from the comics. And for anyone who's read uh, the comics, Pamela is the leader of the Commonwealth. Yeah. Now, the Commonwealth is a group. Uh, like I can't even call it a group. They're not even a group. Commonwealth is more like a damn town, like a city. They are 50,000 strong. Which which in the apocalypse in this is the zombie apocalypse, it's a rarity to see something like that. Yeah, where they have, uh, they have concerts. They actually tried to. They actually did what Deanna from Alexandria tried to do with Alexandria. Yeah, like, remember she tried to bring back civilization inside of a freaking, you know, inside the suburbs of Alexandria. Yeah. Well, the Commonwealth pretty much had that down pat. Like they got that shit straight. Well, they got an army. They got everything. I mean, because think about it like this though. We have seen up in Walking Dead up to this point, right? The idea that in order to survive this world, you got to be cutthroat. You got to be willing to kill people and do the most worst shit. I mean, think about it. Look at what 
all the people that the group has came across, the governor, them fucking people at that place that were that were cannibals. Oh know? yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, yeah. The, uh, what was it? The uh, uh, the terminus, the yeah, terminus, terminus cannibals stuff. The, who, and if I, you really look at term, terminus, it's like you guys really didn't have to be cannibals, but I mean, shit, you know, they did. Hey. Hey, you know, hey, Gareth. Hey, man. Gareth said it best. You have no idea what it's like to be hungry. Yeah, it's called kill a fucking dog. That's what that's what fucking Sasha did. She was like, kill them fucking dogs. Hey, Boom. Okay, dude. First of all, that was random as hell. That a pack of do- a pack of random wild dogs just showed up. And yes, even though that was, you know, hey, look. I'm not for you know I'm not for the cruelty of animals, like animals like that. But, but this is it's either, this is it's you know, them or me. You know, exactly. Survival of the fittest. And again, you're hungry. They were definitely hungry. <laughs> Sasha. Gun or like, dog. Two's a win. Sa- <laughs> Sasha gave zero, zero Fs. Pulled out that freaking AR and just wasted them. Dude, because think One about it. At- Those dogs no. came out there. Rick was looking at them. Everybody was looking at each other. And Sasha's like, fuck it. I was like, well, there you go. Gun. <laughs> like, yep, that dog definitely hit the spot. But no. But with but Georgie, but with Georgie though, it's like the group has already up to this point been around a lot of crazy people. Even the people that was in Atlanta in that hospital were a little bit on the fucking crazy side too. So they it's like you could, they weren't necessarily crazy. They just had they were in the same position as the saviors, where they had somebody that was the leader who was not a good leader. Someone else took over. You got some people that agree with them and some people don't. It's really just a struggle. It's really a struggle of leadership that that that's going on with them. Other than that, you know, other than that, the people at the hospital, they're cool, but they were just crazy if they're thinking yeah. that somebody was coming to rescue them. So but like, I could, like Georgie, I see what you're saying. but like Georgie, I get why the group was initially kind of like this chick is way too calm to be like, you know, cool, you know. But like the crazy part is she knows that eventually. All this chaos is going to fucking swing the other end, and the people that were actually smart like her are going to eventually end up on top. Yeah, of course. And like you said, she noticed. Like, look, I see the look. I like, look, I see the look in you guys' eyes. You guys have definitely been through some stuff. And if I could, if I could run down everything they've been through, like, let's see, herds of like herds of walkers. They've been uh, was they they tangled with the governor. They tangled with the terminus cannibals. They tangled with uh, the wolves. They tangled with mm-hmm. uh, like who is it? Like, yeah, they tangled with the wolves. They tangled with more like more herds of zombies. The saviors. Um, who else? God, they they even can't. Oh yeah, Rick and his, like Rick and crew. They tangled with uh, the claimers. Mm. Joe, you know Joe and the claimers. They, you know that was a that was a small little skirmish. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you just reminded me of a fucking joke that we did with the claimers. Oh, Yo, shout out to Steve for this one. It was a meme somebody made where they're doing claim, and it's a picture of Rick looking at the leader of the claimers' neck, and it put claim. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, because I remember that scene vividly when Rick bit that motherfucker on the neck, and I was like, yeah, that's Rick claiming him right there. It's like, right there. <laughs> Again, shout-outs to them, uh, shout outs to them using the, uh, the source material, because that, I didn't think they, I really didn't think they were gonna do that, but holy crap, they did it, and it worked. Oh my god, that shit had me in tears. I was like, yo, Rick was like, fuck this shit, <laughs> you done. Straight up. And we've seen like, we've seen characters like just do wild shit that that you you really got a question would that even work in real world scenario like could that really work could you really bite somebody at a right spot in their neck and tear it out it's a possibility I don't want to test that out though so I mean I can see if you bit like you know like if you bit like a uh, like, if you bit hard into like an artery or something or you know, like a vein in their neck because yeah I mean it's a, it's the neck it's very vulnerable. But I mean, you have to be—you you gotta have the precision of a damn surgeon to, you know, like do what Rick did. Yeah. But but yeah, like you know, all the people that, that they've come across and dealt with, uh, like George, you just assured him, like, look, here's a book. 
I'm look, I'm giving you this book. Thank you for the records. In fact, you know what? Seeing how everything, you know, seeing how everything is with the with the hilltop, because remember, they took them back to the hilltop. Uh, you know, like they took them back to the hilltop with them and kept them there for a day just to feel them out and see what's really up with them. And so Michonne decided, why are we keeping them prisoner? Like they 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 don't really pose a threat. I don't sense anything. I don't sense any ill will or anything from them. I say we let them go. So not only did they let him go, they gave them the book of plans, you know, like like freaking dude, they were given freaking blueprints and schematics and shit to rebuild like solar panels and uh and it, it, like building like freaking uh, energy efficient machines like using wind turbines and stuff, using windmills and, and all sorts of crazy shit. Like, yeah, here's the plans. Like, I want to see this place flourish. Now that I've you know now that I've given you the knowledge to make it make it happen, I will come back. I will definitely come back when the time does come. I will return to see what this place has become. So, so that worked out for them, and and which we're going to see her later. We're definitely going to see Georgie again in season nine. Now, people, you know, people including myself were under the assumption that yo. Why are we, you know why are we jumping you know why are we jump to the Commonwealth why are we why are we alluding to the Commonwealth when we haven't even seen any sign of the whispers yet? Yeah, I think the whispers so, whispers might make a splash. So everybody was assuming that you know that, that AMC was going to skip the whispers, and they said, "Look, we're not saying we're skipping it. We're taking our liberties. Things are definitely going to happen. They're just going to happen differently." I mean, they're not that, gonna that, happen that the is, way that you think the, they're gonna happen. I mean, that is the man. That is the kind of their their thing, basically, when it comes to the to, to AMC and stuff. They they always like, yeah, just take it easy, guys. You know, don't don't read too much into these things. Just just let it play out, and then we'll go from there. Now, I, and now with all the you know now with uh, with you know with all that happening, you know, um, next thing that took place was. Rick and Morgan. We get to see Rick and Morgan again. It's been a while since we had the two of them team up. We haven't seen them have that. Uh, we, we haven't seen them together since they had that heart to heart back in what season one, two, three, five, uh, five, three, three. Ever since the uh, the clear episode. Yeah, the clear episode. So it's like finally, when there's no chaos, Rick and Morgan finally have their little heart to heart conversation. Yeah, not only do they have a heart to heart conversation, you know, about everything that they've been doing, where, you know, it, it's like it's like one of them tries to feel like, um, in, in fact, no, they didn't go out together. I remember Rick went out on his own to go after the Saviors because they escaped in the middle of the zombie, like in the middle of the Walker uh, breakout inside of Barrington House. A lot of saviors manage to get away, especially after freaking Henry shows up with a machine gun looking for his brother's killer and tried to gun him down. That didn't work. You're a little kid with a machine gun. Of course, they're going to overpower you and escape. So they so they ran off while a handful of saviors chose to stay behind. They stayed behind and actually helped save the uh, like save everybody at Hilltop. Now, as this was going on, Henry uh, disappears. Morgan, assuming that Henry is dead, Carol went to go look for him. And, of course, Morgan was like, no, I should go look. But at the same time, I feel like I shouldn't. I really think that he is dead because anybody that I've ever came, you know, close to, uh, you know, anyone that's ever anyone that I've ever been close to always ends up dying. Yeah. Which, which has been a thing with with Morgan. Anyone he's ever had any type of strong connection with, you know, outside of outside of characters with uh, with plot armor, they always end up his dying. His wife, his his son. <laughs> I yep. mean, his wife, his son, his first protege, Henry. You know, who was Henry's brother? That oh oh oh, uh, freaking Eastman. Yeah. So every it's... dude, everyone he's came across has died in some way. So yeah, it's yeah, it's it's so, a damn shame. You know, so for him, he decides. 
so while he's out, you know, while he's out looking, he's hallucinating and seeing, uh, you know, seeing people, like seeing dead people. You know, he's seeing Gavin, whom which you would think that he was going to kill Gavin, but it ended up being uh, Henry that killed him. So now he's seeing he's seeing Gavin everywhere, and he's also. Uh, oh wait, no, he doesn't see him yet. What happens? What happens next is he goes looking for him, and eventually they do find him. They do find Henry, where Henry was like, he was stuck between like some like I guess like some brush and walkers. It was like two walkers that almost get him, mm. but both uh, like but both uh, Morgan and Carol managed to find him, and he ends up, and of course he's alive and well. Yeah, but. As he decided to uh, break away, like he broke away, he runs across um, Rick. Rick asking him, like, dude, why are you out here alone? And he feels as though he needs to be alone. And of course, they're having the conversation again, going back to what you said. And they end up coming across the escaped, uh, the escaped uh, saviors. And... They ended up getting jumped. They got they got caught by surprise, and they could have died. Both Rick and Morgan could have died right there in that one spot. Like supplies, but they just said, "Hey, you know, you know, you know something. You could fire a weapon. You could do. You can go ahead and try to kill us. But you do know that there is a herd coming. A massive herd is right outside that door." Yeah, but I mean, you do anything, they're gonna come right in here, and you guys are gonna be sol. Well, I mean, here's the thing: this is this is basically right around the time when Rick when Rick and Morgan get back and stuff, right? Uh huh. Um, I think this is around the same time Michonne is basically more or less. I think this is right around the time that Rick finally decides he wants to read Carl's letters. Yeah, he read Carl's letter to Negan. He didn't read the one that uh, that was written to him. Yeah, but yeah. before, but before he did that, like, dude, this was actually a very, uh, like, uh, like a very, like, a, quite a strong episode. The episode is uh, was called "Still Gotta Mean Something." Yeah, when they, when both Rick and Morgan decide, hey, you know what, we're gonna stoop to a whole new low of what we're about to do here. We are gonna convince them. That we're gonna take them back to Hilltop, and all will be forgiven for escaping. Yeah, but of course the Walkers managed to get in. Like the herd manages to get in, even though they, even though those uh, those saviors thought that they were just bullshitting. But no, they did show up, and they said, "Look, man, cut us loose. We'll help you. We're serious. We'll help you. We'll get you back to the Hilltop. All will be the all will be forgiven." <laughs> Boy, that was some bullshit. Because, like, sure enough, once they cleared out enough of the herd, like, to get an opening, oh, they murdered everybody. They murdered all the saviors. I mean, I already knew that was gonna happen. Because, like, come on, even guys, you really think even, that? Hold on, they murdered him even after Rick promised Aiden that he was going to bring back the saviors. He said, "Hey, man, if they don't, you know, if they don't." If they don't put up a fight, can you promise to bring them back, you know, alive? <laughs> he's like, all right, I promise. I'm looking at Rick like, why the he's like, why the hell you lying, <laughs> dude? Real talk. I I knew that Rick was gonna be like, nah, dog, that that that, that ain't popping off here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, dude, all bets are off at this point. Yeah. And so. Like, so you know, so what happens next is they all get murdered, and we see uh, your boy, the dude who killed Henry's brother. Oh, um, fucking um, damn, uh, sh- um, damn it, I'm fucking named. Bl- uh, I was about to say Jadis for a second. Um, no, was it Gary? Gary. So we see him. We see him get murdered, and boy, does he get taken! Bro, the way he got taken out by the zombies, whew. <laughs> it's like any anything that a zombie does, period, in The Walking Dead is always going to be brutal any damn way. So, yeah. I mean, first of all, he held on to. No, I'm sorry. His name was Jared. It was Jared. Oh, Jared, that, uh, Jared. Yeah, it was. It was uh, Jared. Jared was the one that gets killed. So, first of all, uh. 
Like, first of all, Morgan holds him between the fence and the walkers that were coming in. It was like a it was a pile of walkers that walked up to Jared and just tore him to pieces. I mean, he could have easily put a bullet in his head and saved him the suffering, but no. Not only did he hold on to him as he was getting ripped apart, but the fact that he watched that shit happen, I'm like, dude, you do realize you are putting you are doing more damage to your psyche than anything else mm-hmm. by watching this shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah we're 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 coming down to the wire, folks, when it comes to season eight because we're finally getting to the meat of the shenanigans yeah. that is afoot. Yeah. So so he I mean, so you know so after that happens, um, Rick, I mean Morgan actually does he finally admits that. The person that uh, – he finally admits, you know what? You didn't kill your brother's killer. I was the one that killed him. Mm-hmm. Now that you know. And no one's at the battle. Right? <laughs> so, like, so, now, so now as we're getting like, – we're getting close to the wire here. Uh, as you know, everything that happened at the sanctuary went down where Simon's dead and now he's uh, – now he's a walker – uh, pretty much glued to the fence, mm-hmm. you know, as a, as a deterrent. Yeah. And Negan gets a call from Michonne. Now Michonne tells him, "Look, Rick is a look. I know how you feel about us. What I'm trying to tell you, and shut up when I tell you this, is that Carl wrote you a letter. I'm going to read it to you." What you do with this is entirely up to you. So, I just want you to hear this out. Just listen to what Carl had to say to you before he died. So, she reads off the letter to him. And again, you know that Carl, I mean, you know that Carl definitely made an impact on Negan because you mentioned Carl's name. Do tears up. Yeah. Legit he legit had a he legit had a soft spot for Carl. He always you know he always said that if he had a son, he wanted him to be Carl. Yeah. So that, that so, heart, the heart to heart with Carl really uh, really was the thing. Like, you saw a side of Negan that you didn't think you would ever see, and yeah, which which to be fair, which which okay so. The thing of it is, like, most people would take that and be like, oh my god, they're trying to humanize Negan like they did the governor. No. Despite all that shit, Negan's still a son of a bitch. Yeah, he he is. And he, just like when he, uh, you know, when he dropped the, uh, when he dropped that info dump on, uh, on, who was it? On Gabriel, when they were, like, when they were trapped inside that trailer together. Yeah. You know, he admitted that he couldn't put down his wife. When she was sick and died, and yeah. turned, and on top of that, you know he did, you know he did stuff, man. He screwed around on her, and she knew, and they were still together and everything. And it was, it, it was messed up. He knew that he, you know, he knew that he, like you said, he was a son of a bitch, like regardless. Yeah. But at the same time, before The Walking Dead, he wasn't, he wasn't always this ruthless, cutthroat, you know badass with a baseball bat and a leather jacket that we that we know it took his wife to die for him to just break loose yeah you know that's what made him quote unquote fit for the world like fit for the world of walking dead he lost the one thing that was the most important thing to him you know and once that happened he was like dude nothing else matters that's why he's that's how he's been able to survive for as long as he has so, so anyway, so after she read, after Michelle read the letter to him, he tells uh, he tells her, you know what, that was a real compare. I mean, that was a real nice letter, but no, it has to go down. It is what it is. No more talking. And my man breaks the. Uh, he broke the walkie-talkie, so he's done. My man's done. He's like, no, I'm coming after all of you. You're all going to die, and we're going to move on. Period. Yeah. Got to do what you got to do. Negan is a man that does not back down from anything. 
And and the thing is, is you know, Carl's letter was please find a way to work stuff out with my dad. Find peace between the two of you, which circles. Which again, I'm circling back to episode nine, where you remember the remember from the uh, the trailer of season like the, like the very first trailer for season eight uh, yeah. that we saw at Comic Con, where we saw old man Rick. We see the cane. We uh-huh. see all of that shit. Him waking up in the bed. And he's an old man. Everybody, including myself, I thought, oh, so this is going to be the time jump that we're going to see either at the end of the All Out War or something. I thought that's what we were going to see. But instead, that ended up being like the first thing we saw from the uh, like from the beginning of Season 8. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, so we see this at the beginning of the All Out War. Interesting. I'm like, all right, either we, okay, we get a flash forward, I see. Yeah. Well, we come to find out, unlike the uh, unlike the garden party that, that Rick envisioned, of a future that just doesn't exist, period. And, you know, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't exist, period. You know, the one where Abraham and, and, uh, and Glenn are still alive, you know, we're not going to see that. That's, that was a straight up fantasy. But what we got was, it would have been, it would have been, but that flash forward that we got in, you know, like that, that we saw from time to time, especially the part where we see Rick tearing up talking about my mercy stronger than my wrath and all of that again all of this plays up to the first like the first half of that of that flash forward we find out in carl's dying you know carl's dying breath that that was his vision we weren't just seeing like you know like rick's you know rick's future or something like that what we saw was carl's vision of the future after the all-out war we see that rick got older we saw, even though the, even though the, even though the show did kind of throw us for a loop by having Carl in it, he, like we actually see him in it, but we, but we only saw him for that one shot, and he hasn't been seen in anything else. Yeah. But he admits that that I envisioned Alexandria, you know, was has grown better than ever, and every everyone's happy. You see, uh, his sister, you know, his kid's sister is older. Um, Eugene is is a good guy again, and the one shot that really threw everybody for a loop, and it was the last shot of like of that of that scene was Negan was a good guy, which is like mind twist. You know she like she rolled up to Negan. She's like. She's like, good morning, mister. And he says, well, good morning to you. Like, we see Negan with no, we, we see Negan, he's got the full old man beard, no leather jacket. My man's rocking a freaking plaid shirt like he, like grunge rock was making a comeback or something. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that just threw me off. I was like, oh, I was like, Negan? I, uh, okay. I'm like, look, I get it. Cause I, you know, as I read the comics, it did happen where they ended up working together, where both Negan and uh, and Team Alexandria ended up working together. We do, you know, that did happen in the comics, but that just that just blew my mind seeing them actually living in peace together. Yeah. So again, that was Carl's fantasy that we saw, and man, just seeing that, seeing that now reveal itself to be Carl's fantasy. It's like, what's your take on it? Do you think that that's something that could still happen? <laughs> Unless they sit there and switch around Carl's actor. No, no. I mean, well, well. Again, it was his vision of how he saw everything. You know, knowing that this is after he knew that he was bit. Oh, okay. So um, you got you got to think. This is a vision where Carl's not there. Oh, okay. It's a possibility. It, it you know, is that, very much a possibility that could happen, but I think it's it's a situation where. You have to really. How is this going to affect other characters? Because I mean, like I said, we're gonna probably get to it in a second. The whole thing with Maggie and her issue with Negan, particularly, you know, like I said, her 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 boyfriend got got his face caved in and then some. So just saying, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> well, technically, her husband. <laughs> that was her husband. Well, yeah, husband, but still, he, he done. 
You know, so it's 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 a tough thing of seeing Negan just walking around like everything. He's just absolved of everything, you know. Yeah, but again, it's all about the power of forgiveness. You yeah, because even like you said, even where even where Carl was like, "Look, I wanted to kill you. I really did." And I wanted to kill all the saviors, but it, I've gotten to a point, and that's what happens when you have a long-winded ass war. It gets to a point where people start to ask the question: Is any of this worth it? Yeah. Is it even worth going through this struggle for as long as we've been going through? Like, what is the after in this? Like, you know, what comes after this? Yeah, you kill everybody, and then what are you left with? Anything left? Like, what's left? You know, anyone that does survive, we have to live with these people. Yeah. I mean, it's... you know, even see, and that's the thing that he tried to mention. He tried, like he tried to tell uh, like Carl tried to tell Rick that even if this was just all about Negan and no one else, none of the other saviors had to die. You know, if they die, they just got in the way and got themselves killed. If you managed to kill Negan, that was pretty much it. Dude, at the end of the day, you still got to live with these people. Yeah. The saviors, are, like the saviors, they're still here. You take out their leader, then what? Somebody else is going to come up. It's like Hydra, essentially. Somebody else is going to sit there and come in anyway. So you know, which is which is why Carl said we have to find a way to circumvent all of that to where it doesn't just where the cycle just doesn't repeat itself. Yeah. Where oh, you got rid of Negan, you bring in someone else who wanted who always wanted that spot, which would have been Simon. If they had got rid of Negan, Simon would have took over and he would have pretty much taken like, he pretty much would have picked up where Negan left off and tried to kill them too. Yeah. So like so what like, so what we get what we get uh yeah, what we get next is um now we get down to the last episode, uh Wrath. Mm-hmm. So we are driven on this we're driven on this collision course of Ale- of Team Alexandria, Hilltop, and Kingdom against the Saviors, against the last, against the remaining Saviors. Now, Rick is like Rick is like I remember Rick asked Sadiq, "How did it happen? How did Carl get bit?" And Sadiq reveals to him that Carl got bit, honoring my mother. Honoring somebody he's never even met, you know, because mm-hmm. he is something that he believed in, something he believed was right. Yep. You know, I didn't understand it, but he did. And that's I guess that's why, you know, he wanted to take me back to Alexandria, you know, to meet you. And. And right there when he, you know, and you saw the look on on Rick's face, Rick, again, tearing up like, all right. I'm holding back these man tears. I get it. Thank you for the information. I'm gonna walk out this room and cry in the car quietly. It's the like fucking Mackay Pfeiffer and fucking damn Paid and Fold and shit. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm just tired of it, man. I'm tired. So, wait, so again with Rick, um, you know, they're getting ready to they're getting ready to like to cap, cap off. off. You know, you know, to put put, 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 put the final nail in the coffin to end this war once and for all. Uh, Negan, Negan again laying out the bullshit plans for the ambush, and he admits to Gabriel that yeah, I'm sending a decoy group of saviors to set up a roadblock. Now that roadblock is going to be used to trap Rick and crew. I want them, and yes, I know that they're going to die. Hey. Shit happens, whatever. <laughs> you know? But the whole point is to set up Rick so that I can kill all of them in one spot in the middle of that freaking field. And, and so Gabriel tries to duck out of the car and go warn Rick. Of course, that doesn't happen. Eugene uh, catches him and, you know, and, and takes him back and explains to him, like, look. You are messing up the plan here. Get back, like get back in line with us, and follow, like follow this damn plan, or else I'll kill you myself. And even Gabriel is giving him that look, like seriously, Eugene, you, you really, you really switch sides. 
you're really on Negan's side, aren't you? And Negan, and of course, Eugene giving him that look like, I'm really not trying to break character here and let you know that I have something really big set up. Wink, wink. You know, thanks to you for giving me the idea, but I'm not going to say it. So I'm going to remain in character. So, uh, oh, and, and, you know, and as uh, also as this was going on, uh, I forgot. I completely forgot about Oceanside. Uh, you know, Aaron and uh, Enid, they took a trip out to Oceanside to try to convince them to help them with the saviors. Uh-huh. And, and uh, Cindy, who, like, who was, uh, who was it? She was the granddaughter of... You know, of the group like, of the Oceanside leaders, she ends up getting killed, and Cindy ended up becoming the uh, the leader of Oceanside. Uh-huh. My man Aaron camped outside of Oceanside, fighting off walkers, drinking rainwater, <laughs> and trying to convince them, like, "Hey, I'm not going anywhere until you help us with the saviors. I'm telling you, there's a place for you." In this world, after this war is over, if you help us, <laughs> they will help and they're, you. But... And they're very, 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 very reluctant, and eventually they do uh, join up with him because we see them chuck a bunch of Molotov cocktails uh, at the Saviors when they tried to storm Hilltop. So that was cool to see them fighting finally, and. And after everything, after everything was winding down, we get everybody. Rick, like Rick, Michonne, uh, freaking, uh, what's his name? Ezekiel. Everybody is sitting out in the middle of this field. But over yonder, they noticed something. And what they noticed is, they noticed this, uh, this fence. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a particular fence. Something that comic book readers would know all about. This particular fence was a borderline. And beyond that borderline was an ocean of walkers. Now, I'm sorry, I I see an ocean of walkers. I'm immediately scared. So, yeah. Exactly, dude. There was so many of them. They were, like, way off. If you thought that freaking quarry filled with walkers at the beginning of Season 6 was something... No, this is, mm -mm. this is, this is something completely different. In fact, I remember uh, somebody, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, one of the characters had asked him, ever seen that many before? Yeah. No, No, I've never seen this many ever. And they said, look, let's just keep moving. They don't see us. We're too far away from them. They're not going to come after us. So. So... I and, and many and many people who saw that who saw that scene in Raph, uh were led to assume. Did we just get our first glimpse of the whispers? It's a possibility, sir. And I'm I'm assuming so because again we're at that border. Now this border was a bunch of freaking poles, and all these poles that were lined up that made you know they made it look like a, a border line uh, is used in the comics of the Whisper War. Yep. And the wisp and this this uh, this line of poles was a like which which is the spark that uh, that started the Whisper War, where people got murdered, and it was a huge surprise of whose heads ended up on that pike as a board. Yeah. They did that. It was done as a warning. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dive too deep into the Westworld World. Nah, like I'm a, nah, I'm a, nah, you don't like want to you don't want to get people's hopes up. And all of a sudden, season nine is like this is bullshit. You guys said it was the Whisper War, and it's like, hey, I didn't say it. You know, no, so, no, no, no. See, the Whisper War is definitely coming. Yeah, it's definitely. Coming. I'm just not gonna spoil it and say like you know who you know who ends up getting killed. I don't think put. it's gonna go the way we think it is because, like I said, unpredictability of this TV show has put it to where it's like I don't believe anything until it actually happens. Yeah, and, and I'm still sticking to what I said before, which is. It's going to happen, but it's going to happen very differently. Yeah. It's very different in the way they do it. So, like, so yeah, so they, so they're led into an ambush, and we see this 
full line of saviors walking, like walking over the hill, all their weapons aimed down at Rick and his crew. And they all pulled the trigger at the same time, and their guns backfire. Not only do their guns explode, a lot of them get injured, a lot of them get killed from the explosion. Hell, even even uh, Negan's handgun blew up, uh, injuring his hand because he was about to kill Gabriel. But uh, you know, but since he's injured, he looks over at Eugene like, like Eugene, you set us up. <laughs> and yo, did you like how Gabriel with the you know? He was he was without Brother Rock, but he did slug uh he slug Negan one good time. <laughs> My, My man, man rolled up on him and tried to one hit a quitter Negan. <laughs> and tried to flex on his ass, and I'm like, that didn't go the way you thought he was gonna go, wasn't it? Hey, he got his head off and ran away. <laughs> hey, as he should, shit. I mean, you know I'm like, bro, I'm half blind. I'm gonna get this clean hit on you and I am running. Yeah, you know, you know, I already got half of an advantage because your hand ain't working. So I'm a like I'm a like I'm a roll up. You are gonna catch this fade? Hell, even like, even the white try to run up to him, even though he's handcuffed. My man is just just hitting him with both hands, handcuffed. Yeah, <laughs> my man grabbed Lucille and like gut shot at him with uh, with the butt end of it, and he goes and runs off. Now, as he's running off, um, Rick, like the rest of the, I would say, uh, yeah, the, like Rick's crew, they gunned down whichever saviors was trying to fight back, and the rest, and the other saviors pretty much surrendered. Uh, Rick sees Negan running away, takes a couple shots at him, and he shoots like a stained glass window, and you know, like missing Negan in the process. Chases, he runs out of bullets, chases down Negan. Negan takes one good swing on him with Lucille. They're they're rolling around, tussling back and forth, and eventually, uh, you know, Negan gets the like gets the upper hand on him and hits him one good time with Lucille. Now, as he was about to deliver the coup de grace on like on Rick, Rick tells him, "Look, man, he said, look, he said, look, it doesn't have to be this way. It really doesn't. In fact." He, like, if you, just give me ten seconds to like to explain how there's a future in this. Give me ten seconds for Carl. My man used Carl as a weakness on, on Negan. He's like, you know what? Fine. He said, you know, and just to tell you the truth, that whole any mining mo that was all bullshit. You were really the person I wanted to kill. I wasn't gonna like. Truth is, he was never gonna, he never intended to kill Abraham. Or Glenn, he really wanted to kill Rick, but his reason I'm not doing it is because he didn't want to kill the kid's dad in front of him. Yeah, and, but at the same time, he knew that that was his greatest mistake. He said, "He said at the same time, it was my greatest mistake of not killing you, because I'm sure that if I did, Carl would still be alive." Yeah. That much is true. Uh, so instead, you know, he tells him, like, look, Carl said there's a future for t- like, there's a future with us. We don't have to fight anymore. Either we can live together in peace. My man actually listens to reason for a hot second, again, damn near tearing up because he really believed that that is what Carl said. And and that one shot with his guard down, my man slits uh, Negan's neck open. Now, as that happened, everybody watched that shit, and they're like, yo, that just happened. <laughs> yeah. And even Rick had that look, because he looked at Negan as he's, as he's damn near bleeding out in front of him, saying, look what you did. Carl didn't know a damn thing about what you were talking about. And he falls over and passes out now even rick looked at what he just did and and even he realized how far he's gone like holy shit this is something that i have been dreaming about doing i all i wanted to do was kill you 
I said I was going to do it way back at the end, like way back at the beginning of season seven. I said I was going to do it. And now that I damn near did it, he's thinking about Carl again. And so he walks over to Sadiq and tells him, save him. Save yeah. Negan. And as this happens, this is when Maggie freaks out. I mean... And rightfully so. Yeah. Like, bro, he, like, bro, he killed her husband, so she is in the right to, to freak out. But at the same time, Rick is like, look, saviors... We're starting anew. You know, this is a whole new beginning now. Negan is down. We no longer have to fear him. We no longer have to bend to his will or anything. He says, we can move on from this. He says, we can rise up. like, like We can rise up from this war and prosper together. We're all going to go home now. And we're all going to start living. He says, that right there? He point, again, pointing to the ocean of walkers, and he says, "That, that's death, and it's coming for us. Mm-hmm. Us having you know, us having this war is only making it easier for them. We have to be better than this." And which he does make a point by saying, uh, "By you know, by saying if we killed, if I killed Negan." I'm no better than he is. Yeah. Which is true. It's a true argument. I mean, it's a really touchy subject because, again, he did kill Glenn and Abraham for no reason. You know, but at the same time, you kill Negan, you're no better than he is. So, as this happens, um, you know, the war is pretty much, the war is over. Uh, we see that we see, like it's revealed that Eugene was on their side from the beginning. You know, he never really turned against them. And we also see that Oceanside is here to help. I mean, like Oceanside came to help, so they're join they're actually gonna join up with the Saviors. So they're gonna go back to the sanctuary with them and you know, and like re- and the uh, and fix things there. Yeah. Uh, the hilltop they're just um, who is it? sorry the kingdom. They're going to rise, and you know they're also going to move on and prosper. Alexandria, they're beginning their time to heal, recover, and rebuild. Mm-hmm. And now we get to the hilltop. Now at the hilltop, uh, Aiden decides to Aiden tells um, Maggie that hey, I know how to build this stuff. You know, the, like I was reading that book that Georgie left behind, and I'm going to do things right for both the hilltop and for the sanctuary. Yeah. So, you know, so he takes off, and they, you know, they both decide that they're going to work together. Everybody's planning to work together. Now, Maggie has a has a quiet meeting with uh, who was it? She has a meeting with Jesus and Daryl, and says, "Look, we're going to bide our time." Sorry, I'm still let, laughing at the idea of Jesus. It's like, oh, that's right. Jesus is a thing. <laughs> yeah, Jesus is still a thing. Like, we're going to bide our time. We're going to let, you know, we're going to grow. We're going to prosper. We are going to, you know, we're going, like, and we're going to, like, we're going to make sure that this place flourishes, you know, correctly. Mm-hmm. Everything is, you know, everything's going to go good. But when the time comes, we're going to correct that situation that, you know, we're going to correct the situation with Negan because Michonne and Rick, they're wrong about him. See, that's they're the wrong. thing, man. It's like, I, you know, rehabilitation aside, it's like, mm, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, they're wrong about him. We're going to take care of it. And even Daryl's like, yeah, we're definitely going to take care of it. Like, so they're all in agreeing. Like they're all in agreeing that they're just gonna wait for this. They're gonna wait for the right time, and they're gonna they're gonna you know they're gonna handle this. They're gonna handle that situation. Now people were under the assumption that that uh that it's gonna be a war between Maggie, like Maggie Daryl versus Rick, and it it already came. It was our you know news already came out that no, that's not you know that's not what that means when they said they were gonna handle that situation. 
what they were going to do is they were going to try to take it upon themselves to go in and execute Negan themselves. Well, yeah. You know, against Rick's decisions. You know, their their problem isn't with, it's not with Rick. Mm-hmm. They have no problems with him. They don't even want to fight him. They, they have no issues with him. They just disagree with, you know, with the idea of keeping Negan alive. Yeah, the mythology, which, basically. You know, which goes into... Uh, you know, which going, you know, which we cut back to Negan. Uh, well, before we cut back to Negan, we cut back to, uh, to Gabriel. Gabriel goes back to the burned out church. Thanks God for allowing him to see the light and <laughs> keeping him alive. Ah, good old Gabriel. Good old Gabriel. And now we, and now we get back to Negan, who is recovering inside the infirmary. And tell and so he's he's sitting in front of Rick and Michonne and they're like, We know you're awake. We know you can hear us. So here's where we are. And you know, you brought up the idea of the New World Order. And you're right. This is gonna you know, what you are gonna see is the beginning of the New World Order. And you're gonna be right there. You're gonna you're gonna have a huge part in it, Negan. Your part in this is you get to watch as you see that we were better off, that we're better off thriving without you. You were the one that was holding us back this entire time. So yeah. that's going to be your contribution to society. You are going to spend the rest of your life rotting in the jail cell until you die an old man. <laughs> oh, boy. So, and at that, after that, that is for, and that's where season eight ends with the all out war. And all I'm saying is this, right? So season nine, they threw out a teaser poster and um apparently it's gonna be in DC. Yeah, well I I believe they're gonna be traveling to DC. Well traveling but- to DC. And that's having a lot of folks kinda like, all right, what are we gonna do now? Cause again, I like how these articles do the whole, this is a huge departure from the comics. I'm like, uh, dog, it's been like, a huge departure since, again, we said it was season two, three, basically. So it's I awesome. don't even know how they can really call it a departure where they were in DC in the comics. I know, but every article I've seen, this is just a huge departure from the comics. And this is the TV breaking away from the source material. I'm like, okay, but they've been doing this for a while. So why are you guys acting like this is a new thing? I mean, if anything, they they if anything for a long time, I would say post season three, they were following the source material quite you know like quite to a T. For yeah. some like for some instances, they were they were following the source material uh, very close. Yeah, that's that's why you I know? was just like, this is new, folks. What are we doing here? You know, but... it was just it was just that mid season finale of season eight that is what brought this whole thing into like. A giant clusterfuck of of everybody of everybody being at odds with Walking Dead. Like I would say, this has probably been the most the most divisive season. Period. In oh. fact, in fact, if you want to know something, if you want to know how, how bad it is, episode sixteen of season eight is Walking Dead's lowest rated season since the season finale of season one. Yeah, I mean, but. To be to, the thing of it is though, is y- you have a situation. I feel the Walking and, and, and the Walking Dead TV show, right? Mm-hmm. I feel, and it looks like ratings wise, Fear the Walking Dead has been doing real good in comparison to regular. Walking yeah, to Dead. like the regular Walking. Yeah, a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people feel like Fear the Walking Dead. Is doing better than the regular show, and, and I think I'm it's like, because we don't have that, and I think it's because fear doesn't have any connection to the comics, so they're able to tell their own story. Yeah, they can. But funny thing about that is, um, you know, with, and speaking of Fear of Walking Dead, like right after that episode of right after the episode of Regular Walking Dead, they started up Fear of Walking Dead, where. Uh, Morgan had made his trip to Texas to meet up with the cast of Fear the Walking Dead. Now, before he did that, he went to the junkyard to meet with Jadis mm-hmm. and t- 
told her that Jay, told her that Rick is offering you uh, a chance to live in Alexandria, you know, with the rest of the, you know, with the rest of the crew. And he chose to stay behind at the junkyard until he was ready to go off on his own because he wanted to be alone. He didn't want to be, he couldn't be with people at that time. Yeah. So, so what's going on with, you know, like with, with, you know, with this show and how it relates to the comics is people are, like people did ask, like, well, what's going to happen with, you know, like with Negan? Well, seeing how season nine is going to be very different from the way it from the way it played out in the comics, um, there is a point where in the comics Rick tries to figure out how to deal with the whispers, you know, in the beginning of the Whisper War, and he was at his wits' end so much that. He had to go and have a personal conference with Negan. He went. He went confided with Negan for advice about what to do mm-hmm. as a leader. And that was probably one of the most, like, probably one of the most interesting issues in The Walking Dead of the Whisper War. If like, it, you know, if you have a chance, check that out. Please check out that issue. Just read all of the Whisper War. It's a really, really good. Uh, story in the Walking Dead uh, arcs. Um, in fact, I'm waiting for them to put out the, I think it's the fourth, the fourth or fifth uh, compendium books because the reason why we haven't seen a compendium in like a long time is because they do it by a certain number of, of issues that get released. Yeah, so. So right now they're, right now they've only, right now they've, they've released three and I think they do it by every 75 episodes, every 75 issues that get released gets put into a compendium. Yeah. So, um, yeah, with that, uh, it's, uh, Walking Dead Season 8. Yeah. Walking Dead Season 8 is, again, it, it, it was a roller coaster of emotions and controversy. I mean, for me, like, I watched it in... Because I wasn't watching Walking Dead Season 8, like, every Sunday, like, everybody. Because I think Season 7 I was watching a little bit. But, like, this one I actually did kind of marathon it. So, it was like, okay, this is actually fun to watch marathon in it now. Because everything is just... I don't have to wait that week for another episode. And then another week for another episode. So, it was like, all right, I can just watch it all in one hit and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's, it was definitely kind of like all right it's over but what's next and like i said we got our glimpse of the whisper war we know that's coming we got the time jump that's coming and we're gonna see the commonwealth yeah so So those are like the three those like three big things that, that we got to look forward to uh whisper war commonwealth time jump yeah so uh yeah with that in mind um yeah, we'll yep. catch you guys this, on the flip side next time. We'll so yeah, this. So yeah, so this has been an episode of Bam. Uh, we will definitely catch you guys again for season nine, Walking Dead. I don't know if we're gonna do. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna do the premiere or like the premiere episode, or if we're gonna do uh, mid-season finales, like you know, like we did with the last ones. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out and stuff. Hopefully, between yeah. now and then, y'all, you and D can do another BAM episode and stuff. Yeah. Perfect. I would say, depending on the payoff, I would say, depending on the payoff of, of episode one of season nine, if it's if it if we got a really good payoff, then yeah, we probably might do an episode from just for just episode one. But all right. But, but other than that, you know, like other than that, just you know, stay tuned. Uh, we're 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 getting back to. You know, we're getting back to putting things back to perspective for Bam. You yeah. know, just give us some time. You still got plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of three Black Geek episodes, and you know, our was it Working Title Sports Show, Comic Book Corner, Artist Alley, and all of our other shows that we've done. Yeah. And again, we will be at San Diego Comic Con uh, July 18th. So yeah, with that, we will like we will catch you guys later. Peace. Oh man. Because we need to tell you some things. 
And you don't have to open your eyes now. But you're gonna open them soon. Because we're gonna make you watch what happens. And this isn't about who you killed. No, we, we killed people. No, this is about what you did to us. What you did to so many people. How you made people live for you. How you put people under your boot. I save people. Michonne. He needs to know. This isn't a discussion. We can open up his stitches for a little while just to remind him. Carl pictured something better. All of us working together for something bigger than all of us. And you'll have a job, too. Yeah. You get to be a part of it. You'll be an example of what this will be. We're not going to kill you. We're not going to hurt you. You're going to rot in a cell. For the rest of your life, day after day. You're going to be evidence that we're making a civilization. Something like what we had. Something we're going to get back. And you get to watch it happen. And you get to see how wrong you were about what people can be, about what life can be. You, alive, is going to help show people that things have changed. That keeping you breathing earns another way, a better way. That's the part you'll play. So after all this, maybe you're good for something.